Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we're going to explore the site's unique conditions. And we're going to look at it from a very broad contextual insight all the way to a very immediate condition of the site. In order to do this, we'll examine the site at two scales. The first scale at one to 2,500, and then we'll be zooming into one to 500. This will be to capture both the immediate surroundings and the broader context highlighting the project constraints and opportunities that will influence the design. I will then take you through the step-by-step -step process of stylizing the site plans, turning layers on and off, adjusting line weights, hatches and fills, uh, adjusting the colors in order to make sure that you're showing the correct information, the relevant information at each scale. So looking at the site at a one to 2,500 scale, as you can see here, I've put together a bit of a kind of graphic drawing that breaks down the information um, into the relevant and important information that we want to show at the scale. As I've discussed, the site is located in a prominent location close by to the local town of Upra Sands with a beautiful beach. And we've got very good access for the site via these main roads. So you've got the packet lane and then you've got the A394 linking the site, making it a really great location and a really accessible location by vehicle to the local town Pras Sands. And in this drawing, I've also indicated where these uh, precedents or not precedents, but the local vernacular is um, located and where these architectural features are located, um, just as a graphic tool to kind of highlight and, and call out some of these features of the drawing. And now in this drawing, we've got a couple of key features that I wanted to express. So of course, the location is a significant feature showing the, the kind of proximity of the site to Pras Sands and its relationship. But also the access, of course, indicated with this red dotted line. And then the contours is a significant feature of this drawing, indicating that this is a, a quite a severe slope. There's a strong, uh, change in levels and that this is sloping down towards the beach and we didn't want to overwhelm the drawing with too much information and so this is a kind of a good level of information required for this drawing now let me show you how you can import a dwg into rayon and break it down to this level of detail so the first thing that we're going to do is head up to the left hand corner and click the menu tab we're going to click import and then dwg and then we're going to head down to our site model, so the 1 to 2500. And what it's going to do is it's going to process the model and import it at the exact scale of that drawing. And then it'll appear with this set scale tool. And this is essentially trying to help you define the correct scale and to kind of help the software pick up on the right scale. So what it would do is it will highlight a, a certain area with this blue line. And it'll give you a few options to make sure that you are defining the correct scale for the drawing so for example we can estimate that this is about 100 meters and then it will instantly assign the right scale to the drawing so we're going to click 100 meters we're going to click import and then it will come up with a pick insertion point which we're going to select and then simply drop into the model now this is just a process of breaking this drawing down into the relevant information as you can see this has a lot of detail that we won't require at 1 to 2,500 scale, especially at the kind of graphic level and the clarity that we want to show in our site analysis. So things like this with the kind of contour tags, all of these tags that we have, even the colors, we want to make sure we have a consistent color scheme. Now, when you come over to the left-hand side, you will see this layers tab. And as you can see, you've got the import here, which is essentially the DWG that we've just imported. And if you click the drop down, you will see that all of these layers are broken down so every item in your model will live on a layer and whatever layer that you draw on or active layer that you draw on will be the the kind of layer that your object or polyline or shape or whatever it is that will be assigned to the active layer now what i'm going to start doing is i'm start, literally going to start switching off some of these layers so we've got building text we don't want uh, we want general text turn off uh, we've got water text so any real text we don't really need they're not relevant and then what we're going to start doing is maybe a landform line we can turn off we don't really need that i would also spend some time just kind of deleting some of the geometry that i don't believe required um a lot of this landfill area or general lines we we don't really need 
So now I'm going to start styling the drawing by changing the line weights, changing the color fills, changing the line fills. And this is a process of selecting the geometry, heading over to the style section on the right hand side where you can affect pretty much any aspect of your canvas, the line weight, color fill, etc. This is where you'll have a list of styles that are assigned to uh, the polyline or geometry or shape that you have selected in your model. So let's go ahead on this right hand side, we're going to select edit style. We're going to change the stroke to, let's say, gray. And as you can see, all of the contour lines that also have that same style have also changed to that light gray. And to be honest, we're going to make it even lighter because we don't want it to be too prominent in the drawing. So let's drop that maybe like so. So you now got a nice subtle contour line on the drawing. I'm now going to apply the same principles throughout. So for the hatch color for the landfill, we're going to maybe also change this to quite a light gray, as you can see. I'm then going to change the water to maybe a hatch. So we're going to head down to the fill option. We're going to select. Uh, so you've got solid texture, hatch or image. Uh, the texture is something that we'll go into a little bit more detail further down the line when you're adding certain textures <laughs> to your kind of floor plans and giving it a realistic tone. As you can see here, you can make your way through all of the textures. But for this instance, we're going to go over to hatch. Um, and I really enjoy adding hatches to my drawings as a real kind of graphic element to the drawing. So I'm going to head down, scroll down to maybe oblique. Uh, we're going to then change the scale of the hatch. So you can come down, click edit, head over to scale. We're going to bump that up to maybe 10. And voila, you now have a hatched water. But it looks a little bit too strong. It's a little bit too dominant in the drawing. So we're going to select it. We're going to change it once again, head into the hatch, and we're going to change the stroke to a light gray once again. So it's a little bit more subtle. So I think at this stage, the drawing is getting there, but it's still a little bit too dense. It's far too much information, uh, especially these building lines or, or these kind of just general lines. They're a little bit too heavy. And I think, to be honest, let's just turn them off. So then the roads are a little bit more prominent. We can then obviously change the style of those roads to a bit more of a lighter gray. The next step is to trim some of the edges, crop it down so that we've got a nice neat edge. And in this instance, you can use a polyline, you can use any shape uh, that you wish, but I'm going to use the circle. I'm going to place the circle so that we have our site located and the town center located in view. And then we're going to come down to the editing tools. We're going to first make sure that the shape is selected, so the shape that we want to trim to. Come down and we're going to select trim. So the shortcut is TR. And this would just be a case of trimming the image down and anything, any lines that are intersecting with that shape, it will trim it. And this will just be spend a bit of time doing this. And you'll come to something like this, which just looks a lot neater. Now, the final few bits that I'm going to add to this drawing is going to be highlighting the main access roads. Uh, so this is just going to be a simple case of using the polyline tracing over these main access roads trying to be as accurate as possible we're going to come down to the stroke we're going to change it to quite a thick stroke so maybe even 25 mil maybe even bigger let's go 50. i'm going to go with a red and we're going to change it to a dash so if you select at the bottom here you can select the different line types so you've got all of these different options and i'm actually going to do maybe let's do a dot and then we're going to add an arrowhead to it. So we're just going to draw our own arrowhead. And you'll arrive at something like this, where we have the kind of main roads highlighted. We've got a punch of red in there, so it's a nice graphic tool. So everything's obviously black and white, a nice kind of soft gray. And then we've got a nice kind of bold touch of red. If you've seen a lot of my work, you'll notice that I do like a, a punch of red in my drawings. And the final thing to add to this drawing is going to be some annotation. Um, highlighting these areas, but also doing the call outs for the local vernacular and some of those architectural features that I've picked up in the local area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the building on the map. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to draw a kind of point that is pointing to that part of the map. So we'll do it as like a dark gray. We're then going to draw a call out using the polyline. So we'll do something fairly rough like so. Click enter change that also to a lighter gray 
And then we're going to draw a square, which we're going to drop the image in. So if you hold down shift, you'll get an even. And we might want to scale that up. And that'd be a case of importing the image and going through this process as I've discussed. You then want to scale that down to the square. Position it so it's fairly center. Double click into it. Using this toggle, bring it into the square so we're kind of cropping it down. And you'll eventually end up with something like this once you spend some time cleaning up the drawings. And this is our 1 to 2500 drawing that indicates the relevant information at this scale and highlights the key features that we want to show. So now let's dive into 1 to 500. Now at 1 to 500, we want to show a much more kind of local site analysis, the more local site conditions, opportunities, and constraints and how we're going to respond to the immediate site conditions and the immediate kind of neighboring existing buildings, etc. So this is a, a, the drawing that we're kind of going to end up with. Uh, as you can see here, you've got the site with the site boundary. Uh, we've got some kind of symbols and hatches that are indicating some textures and areas of kind of grassland or kind of farmyard. Uh, we've got all our site analysis looking at the sun path, the prevailing wind, and then obviously some of the key site conditions such as views towards the sea um, and then going in a little bit more detail looking at the public and private zones and so with the site analysis the main things that we want to focus on are the sun path prevailing wind basic kind of environmental features but then views plot access and public versus private so i'm now going to take you through the process of how we can put together a drawing like this so once again, it's going to be a process of importing the DWG and it'll be exactly the same process of breaking the drawing down into the key elements and features that we want to show, making sure we have some of the tags turned off and essentially get to a point like this. And now I want to show you two things that's going to add much more detail and make the drawings much more rich and layered. So the two things I'm going to add is first, it's going to be trees and I'm going to show you how you can create your own symbol which you can then group and then populate throughout your drawing. And then we're going to add hatches to show how you can show those, those areas of farmland or grass or whatever those zones are. But it also just adds that graphic element to your drawing and adds a bit more detail. So the first thing that we're going to do is once again, head over to the layers and we're going to create a new layer called trees. And now, as you can see, by having this button here highlighted, this will indicate that it's the active layer and we want to make sure that whenever you're drawing anything and if you want it on a specific layer, make sure that you have that active layer selected. Now, this is just going to be a very simple case of me drawing a kind of symbol for a tree. Uh, so we're going to make sure it's got no hatch. We're going to do it as a light gray. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center point, which I can do like so by clicking and it will obviously snip to uh, the edges of the circle. And I'm now going to scale this down by heading down to the editing tools once again, finding the scale tool, which is S on the shortcut, selecting the middle, dragging it down. So then we have a kind of center point for the tree. And this is simply gonna be my symbol for trees. And usually when I'm applying vegetation to my drawings, I like to keep them this simple. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna highlight those elements. I'm gonna come down to the bottom and I'm gonna select group. And what this has done now is you can change that to tree at the top right hand corner. And then if you hold down Alt, you can then drag this across and populate across your drawings. And you'll get something like this. As you can see, the tree is distributed across the drawing at different scales, scaling it up and down, changing the line weight color uh, to a nice light gray so it's not too dominating, but it just gives a nice level of detail and an, an extra kind of layer to the drawing. Now, once again, we want to make sure that we create a new layer called hatches. We want to make sure that it's active. We're then going to come down here and what I'm going to use is the polyline tool. Now I want this to be quite sketchy. I don't want this to be too kind of specific. And so I'm literally going to start drawing around these areas that I believe are a particular kind of zone, whether it's kind of farmyard or whether it's trees. And I'm just going to very quickly and crudely kind of go around the edge. And the idea of reason why I'm kind of doing this so sketchy is as you see, when you add the hatch, 
it will give it a nice layered look and it won't look too kind of precise but instead it will look like a more of a kind of diagram so now once we've closed the polyline so that's a really important thing to note you want to make sure the polyline is closed you come down here to the fill and once again you've got your four options you've got solid color which you could do a solid red you've got texture or you've got hatch and the hatch that we're going to use is going to be this dashed oblique and i think this is a really nice hatch to use I'm going to head down to edit. I'm going to scale this up to maybe five or maybe a little bit more. We'll go seven. And I'm also going to change this color to a nice light color so it's not too dominating. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the stroke because we don't want to see that. And there you go. You've got a nice area outlined. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this across the drawing once again. So do a very similar thing where I'm filling some of these zones, once again, super sketchy. I'm then going to use the same hatch as before, but I'm going to change the scale. So that one was, I believe, seven. I'm not going to change this to 10. So then you've got a variety in the scales, in the tones. Make sure the hatch is turned off, uh, the stroke is turned off. And you can see that it starts just adding a bit more layer to the drawing. It adds a bit more information bit more detail and texture and we're going to populate this across the drawing as part of this lesson and the course in general you will have access to templates to blocks that you can use for your drawings the templates will help you as you make your way through the course but also the blocks will help when you're creating your own drawings you can drop them into your own drawings um, and use them as you please so as part of this lesson we have some blocks some site symbols uh, that we're going to use for our site analysis and to annotate our drawings and so i already have a load of blocks ready for you guys to use and i'm going to show you here over on this left hand side we have if we open the layers tab you will see that we have something called canvases and this is something that i haven't discussed yet um, and this is a really useful feature of rayon uh, when you're building your drawings and adding this this kind of amount of detail and layers so canvases is a space in a model where things can be drawn. So this here is a canvas and you can create multiple canvases within a model. So you can see here we've got one canvas here and then another canvas are these site symbols. A canvas essentially carries its own settings, units, uh, styles, line scales, display settings, etc. And you can create canvases by coming up to the top here, clicking the plus button and doing model canvas or paper canvas. And in this case, I have the site symbol canvases and you can simply come into here. You can select whatever features that you want to bring over into your model. Um, you can right click them, click copy and just drop them into your model. So it's a really nice way of setting up multiple kind of workspaces in the same model. Now for this site analysis, we have a range of site symbols that you might find really useful to add to your drawings. So we have public access, pedestrian access. We've got legend symbols. We've got height symbols north arrow symbols scale symbols so we've got scale bars we've got terrain symbols view range etc we've got all of them in here so if you want to use any of these symbols you're welcome to so if i simply select it click copy bring it over into my model and you can see that it will paste into the canvas now with a bit of time annotating the drawings these are the key features that i've picked up on uh, so we've got the site location we've got the site boundary of course we've got views We've got these kind of trail markers indicating that there could potentially be a trail around here that we need to be sensitive of. We've obviously got the sun path. We've got prevailing wind. And on this right hand side, we have a slightly more zoomed site analysis to show a little bit more detail that is more relevant to the immediate analysis and the immediate existing buildings that surround. So this is just a case of selecting this area, cropping it down, scaling it up. And then the site entrance, of course, and then this really important relationship with public and private, making sure that we're respecting our neighboring properties. Now, this gives us a good base for us to move forward with the scheme.